If you want to create a very dynamic and interactive Excel dashboard, this particular video will definitely guide you through. In the previous video, we did transform this particular data from something like this into this very one you have right here by adding more calculated column into it. If you want to follow along step by step, all you have to do is to make sure you download the resources file we have actually used for this particular dashboard, have it unzipped and open the PDF inside it for you to take a look at the business requirements before you start creating with me. So if your aim is to actually create something as dynamic and interactive, just like what you have on your screen right now, so let's get into it. So what I'm going to do right now is to bring in the price range into my rows and I have the expensive and less expensive. I, I want to create a chart that is not some kind of a default chart inside Power BI, but sorry, inside Microsoft Excel rather, but something very, very simple. So what I'm going to do is just to right click and just make sure I am showing this based on percentage of grand total like this. So once I've done this, the next thing I'm going to do now is to come over here and uh, reference this particular part here and uh, copy it down. Here we go. So here I'm going to do control B to separate it. So over here, I'm going to bring in the percentage as well in here. But before then, I want to format this into percentage number formatting. So we take off this and I'm going to go ahead with something like this. Okay. So let's go ahead and reference this top one here. So we go with this. Oh, now it has been cleared. Let's do that again. All right, so here we go. We have this, right? So once we have this, the next thing I'm going to do is just going to type in here full, so full percentage. So over here under the full percentage, we have to make sure this one is just percentage. I'm going to put it on 100%. Right. So I'm going to do 100%. That is it. So once I've done this, the next thing I'm going to do now is to actually use this to create my chart. So if I select all of them now and go over to the top ribbon and click on insert, click over here to select this. I'm going to have something like this that wouldn't make any sense yet. So what we're looking forward to creating is not this kind of chart that you're seeing right now, but something similar to this. Just go ahead and hit double, just double click. So we have this. I'm going to just go ahead and take off this. But before I take off this particular part, all I have to do is to double click on this. Then we're going to have this one over here. We will have the minimum we'll put zero there. And we have here maximum we put just one. So what are we trying to establish? We want to actually make sure it starts from zero and it stopped at 100, not 120. So if I just hit my enter key, now you can see that has been expressed. So this particular one here, let me show you that. This 100 here should actually be this very one. So now I can go ahead and remove this from here. Then I don't need this particular legend here. We can take off this one. And the next thing is for we to take off this and we take off this very one. So click on this one and let's go over to this particular part. So I'm going to move this. So what I'm going to do now is just to some kind of overlap this. So when we overlap it, look at what happens. It sends the main percentages we want to see behind. What you need to do is to go over to the top ribbon and click over switch, uh, what is that? Okay, not, not this one. Just right click here and go to um, change chart types. No, select data. So we select data now, you can just click on this, move down, that is it. So we now have something like this, right? It's beautiful. So the next thing we're going to do right now is to click on it and click over here. Then we just make something like this. So click and let's us so just give it a little space, not much space. So we're going to put it on five and see what we have. So this is what we want to have like this. So this wouldn't look very much okay now. So I'm going to just change this to 
something like this and uh, this one like this so here we go I can just cut this one and take it to my dashboard and drop it somewhere around here for the time being so later after all it will make a lot of sense so what i'm going to do is to select the top one and click over here then we go for the label so we have it right on it you can see so this is some kind of very dynamic so whatever i change from here if they are connected oh sorry this is not connected to this yet so it's only connected to the highlight so we are going to connect it later so you can see how dynamic it will be so let us go to the next one going over here right now so for this next one now we want to create something that we wouldn't go through what we have went through before all i have to do is to copy this particular area down to this part right so ctrl c to copy it and quickly we move to this end i'm going to paste it over here ctrl v to paste this here so now we have exactly the same thing we have before so all I'm going to move now is to move this one away so that my pivot table shouldn't complain about something beneath here is obstructing or whatever. Okay, fine. So with this here now, we are going to look at how we can create a chart for... Oh, create a chart for our payment method. So for our payment method, all we have to do is to remove this one and go right here and bring in our payment method into here. And this is what it is so we have to clear this particular part away because it's not going to be useful right so if i double click on this right now as you can see it takes it to 100 percent without we having to do this again can you see it we are reusing the previous one all i have to update right now should be something here so revenue by payment method right here so just go ahead and do the same thing I've done before. You can select body highlight, but sometimes it will look very weird. You can just do this and insert. Then we go over here. We select this and quickly you take this off from here. You take this off. Then we turn this off as well. We just make this a bit smaller. So bring it over here. Right click, select data and you click on add a new series. So you add this one. You take off this one totally just make sure you remove it and we highlight this particular part right here we click on ok and we click on ok right here then we should have something here so the reason why we could not have anything here now was because this one is actually looking at that particular slicer so what can we do so before we do anything let us name this slicer something very unique so i'm going to come over here now so before then let us remove this first uh, remove field cancel it so we're gonna remove this one um, the already data okay so it has been removed so I am going to bring in here my payments method in here so with the payment method here now we have lost it so all we have to do is to recreate that again so to recreate that now this one is gonna be check i believe you remember what we have done here i can start with the if function so using the if function to check if count a that counts this for me is gonna be closed is kind of greater than one then give me blank otherwise give me what we have sitting here then we close and we hit on enter key so because there is no selection yet it's not gonna happen so for that right click right here and add a slicer then once i actually do this i'm gonna have this then this should be used for what is going to be here so what i'm going to do now is just for me to double click over here and uh, for this particular part i'm going to select it and make sure it's looking at this it's your f4 key to lock it and you once you hit the enter key and you just make it go down so you can see it's now working 100 percent so all i have to do is just to double click and uh, make sure you do this and all of that so we'll take care of the rest later so the only thing i'm going to do right now on this one is just for me to make sure i some kind of click over here and turn on the data label which is this very one here oh sorry for that so don't select just one all of them then data label should be turned on then once i've done that click over here and uh, let's come over to here 
and select this and we select this area and we click on OK. Then we turn off the value. That is what it is. Can you see it right now? It's as simple as ABC, very easy to be created. So all we have to do is to control X to get it to our dashboard. We are going to align this properly later after all. Okay, I think we have just uh, two dashboards, two charts to be created right now. So we want to create a chart that is for the top customers. So which is something very simple and anybody can create this. So we don't have to copy all of this. We're just going to do this. Or still, just keep this Ctrl X to cut it and bring this over here and drop this over here. So that's our rough work. Later after all, we're going to fix things around. So I'm going to do Ctrl C and let's come over here then just control to drop it down and on this one i'm going to just remove this and i'm going to bring the customer sorry or the location here let me bring the location here so the location you can use map but i'm just going to use this because of how i want to interpret what i have right here so this will be best for me to actually get this you know done so i'm going to use this so clicking over here now, I can get this off. Just click on OK or cancel for the first time. I'm going to just go ahead and select this area so that I wouldn't do this again. Ctrl X to actually save it in my clipboard. And now we can remove and click on OK. And uh, we go for the buyer location that we have in here, which is this one. Put it over here. And now we paste this. Hit the enter key. So can you see it now? So we just have to update this because as you can see, it's not some kind of, um, so where do we need to update? This is the place we need to update. This part here needs to be updated. So we just some kind of do this. So you can extend it beyond here so that if you have more to come, it will pick it up. That is what you can do. Or you can create some kind of um, an array that will automatically give you what it is. So let us hit the enter key right here. And if we go back up, we can click on this one and we need to add a slider to it as well. So this slider will help us to get the dynamic, you know, stuff. So if I just select this one, I have this. So double click over here and make sure this very part here is looking at this one. Then the F4 key, hit your enter key, that updates it. So you have to copy this down and it picks whatever has been selected from here. So I think this is not something new to you again. You know how you should know how to create this by now. If you want to create them at the same time, you can just highlight this, exclude the switch and come over here and just go to this and select this. And this is what you're going to have. Weird, right? So what would you do instead? You come over here and go to insert and you select this particular recommended chart and it's recommended chart for you and just go ahead and use this very one. So you can see how fast it is. So here we go. We take off this very part as well. We take off this one and quickly we want to go ahead and turn on data label. So we just go ahead and make it a bit smaller then we can see what we have here. So if you look at it right now, there is something weird that happened here. We didn't really take note of that. Maybe you never thought of it as well, but I did. So all I'm going to do now is to bring this over. Let's hide this one. So bring this over here, right? That is better. So this one will still link to this very one. So do you see we have to some kind of copy this down? Copy it down to this level. So this is where we are missing out something from. So now this is good. So we can now highlight this environment now and go over to the top ribbon here and uh, do this. Then we go with this. So this kind of chart we have wouldn't be an ideal chart to be used for this kind of analysis. So we will have to change our chart type, which is very simple to be done. All you have to do is to right click and go over to change chart type and we select this bar, we go with this very one here and we click on OK. So once we have done this, the next thing I'm going to do now is just to come over here, click and right click and go to sort and sort from largest to smallest. So as you can see, the next thing you have to do is to just to double click over here. You have this up and you just go over to this particular, you know, axis options and just say reverse uh, change their category in reverse order and you have it rightly. 
So once you have done this, the next thing you have to do is just to select this very one and make sure you overlap things here. So let's just do something like this. So once we have gotten this done, we need to bring up the data label. So make sure you shift this away from here. Then you can see how you can actually get this right in here. So let's click over this and this particular label options. Here we go. Inside here, we fix this in. I will click on OK with the select value and we have this this is what we have so once this gets to a dashboard it will definitely look good so i'm going to take off this ctrl x to cut it and over here inside here so i'm going to control v to drop it here don't worry about the arrangement right now because we're going to set this set things up right here later okay i think we are on to our final okay i think we have to this one we have one more which is very simple so over here instead of do payment method so we're gonna do location by location so i want to call this control c to take this away from here and uh, we go over here we select this particular part and what i'm going to do here now is just to go over to this and show fit list we have this up so we don't want this now what we want is actually customer full name so when we get our customer full name where the heck is it this very one you can see we have lots of customers like lots of customers this cannot fit into a single chart if you try to do this it's going to look very weird let's try it so here we go can you see it now doesn't look fine. So what we can do instead is for we to only show the top or the bottom. It depends on what we really want to show, right? What I can do is just to show uh, right here. I'm going to show the top five. So once you right click, you can actually go to filter. You go to top 10 and you limit this one to just the top five. So here we go. So here we have the top five. It will make a lot of sense now. Can you see it? Mm, but still, what we can do is for we to actually change this particular kind of chart into a different chart. So quickly right click and go to this particular part and remove all those buttons and take off this from here. So in this particular part here, I think we are messing things up right now. So I'm going to take off this very one. We should have done exactly what we have done before, uh, but we flub it. It's just one thing that we are not going to have. So all I'm gonna do now is just do some kind of highlights, right click and delete it away from here. So let's go back here now and copy from this particular part. So pardon me for this and Ctrl C. So we can try to drop this here. This is what we're gonna change. Change this one to full name. So once we've done that, quickly right click and filter by top 10. So we choose the top five. Once I click on OK, we have this. So here we still have location. This time around, we're going to have customer. Revenue by customer top five. So now we are going to clear this away from here. So let's quickly go over here now. This one. We want to make sure we update it. So click over here and copy this one inside a clipboard so that we shouldn't lost everything. So we want to take off this. Yeah, click on OK. Then we go down. We select the... Um, oh, oh, we don't need this rather. We don't need this. We're not going to do this. We wouldn't have any filter for this. We don't need this actually. So we can just forget this one right here. So you can just highlight and remove this if you want to. Okay, you can't. We should be able to get this removed. Okay, that is good. All right, what we need to just do is just to come over here and uh, select just this one without the highlight because we don't need any highlight for this. You can remove the highlight from here by clicking on delete. Then you highlight this area. You create a chart with this. Is how easy it is for you to actually get things done. Where the heck is it? This one. Okay, we have this here, right? So I don't need to have this kind of chart. So let's just get the appropriate chart used. 
So we go with this one. We take off this. So now we're going to rank it. So double click and uh, category in reverse order. All right, we have this right here. Before we can go to the uh, to make the last chart, we need to actually arrange our dashboard first. Then we can now go for the last chart. So let's do it. Cut this one away from here. Control X and you come over here. You drop this right in here. I just moved all my charts down. Yes, you can see is they are all right here. And I created this behind the scene for you to actually you know, do this with a very short time. It's very simple. In case you want to see my dimension, here we go. We have this one. You can see the dimension right here. If I click on this one, you can see here we have the high, the height and the width. Then the same thing to this very one. But this depends on the kind of screen you are using. So you might have more dimension than mine right here. So all you have to do is just to actually take a look at how I arranged all my charts, all my cards and do the same thing. OK, the last thing I'm going to show you now before we start bringing our charts is to Ctrl D to duplicate this one here. And once you have done that, Ctrl 1 to bring this up the gradient fill. And I want to come over here and uh, select something. Let's go with this one. Let's go with this. Something like this. So once I've done this, I'm going to bring this into the middle just like this. So over here, I'm going to use white on this one. Let's scroll down and confirm that it is white like this very white here. Then on this particular one, we want to select this color and click over here and select the same color for it. You get it right now. So I can move this a bit here. I want to form something just like this and over here. So let's move it back a bit. Just a bit movement is something I want. OK, let me move this one. OK, something like this seems to be cool. Once I've done this now, I can just go ahead and keep it on top of this very one and make sure it covers it. I'm going to right click and send it to back. So I'm going to just use my up arrow to move this up. And if I just release it, I'm going to have something like this effect. So I want to make it until it's hitting and I only want that top side to show, right? So here we go. Something like this is what I want. Do you see it now? That effect is what I want to have. So to have the same effect on this one, you just have to go ahead and click on this one and just resize it and make sure it cover up for this particular part right here. And right click, then you send it to back. And you make sure you do this and you show up something like this. Can you see it right now? So I'm going to do the same thing to this particular one right here. Just this. Just think outside the box and you will have something as beautiful as this. So here we go. We make sure this one goes in. So right, just control Z to bring it back and Keep adjusting things until you have your desired setup done. So something like this looks very much more OK. This is what I really want. So if you want to have the same thing like this for this particular cards right here, you can do that. So it's optional. It depends on what you really want. So right now we have gotten this. So the next thing I'm going to do is to actually add all the labels I'm going to have for it or the titles for all my charts. So keeping this one right here right now, you can stretch it and stretch it up, have it opened. So over here, I'm going to just type revenue distribution. So here we go. We have this. So after having this now, uh, Sometimes you will need to actually use subtitle to some kind of bring further, you know, understanding to our chart. So before I bring the chart right here, I want to type something in here and that will be uh, revenue. So 
So you can see this will make a lot of sense. So it will give us much more meaning to our chart. So over here, I'm going to just keep, keep this one at this level. And uh, I want to use the same color I'm going to use for my chart right here. So we have not decided on the color we're going to use for our chart, but something similar. So let's now go down and pick up our first chart and bring it up to this level. So here is our first chart to bring forward. So it now is going behind here. Don't worry about it. Right click and say bring to front. So here we go. We keep this particular chart over here. So this color looks cool because it blends with our current color. But if you don't like it and you want to use another color, so be it. You can change the color you have right here. Uh, even me, I think like I should actually have it changed to something different. So let's see what color we're going to use for this. So over here now, I'm going to double click on this one and I have this up. I can go over here and click on this part, then click on more colors. So for the benefit of those of us that, are, that do not have hex code, let us use the RGB for an instance. I'm going to use here 180. So over here, I'm going to do 192. And the last one, which is the blue part, is going to be 238. So here we go. We have this color. So for this very color right here, I want to change it to something like this very one. So let us step out and see how it looks. This is what we have right here. This looks this way. So just double click on this and remove the fill and the outline. Then you can spread it out to see and just make sure you just take it up a little bit. And over here, you bring this down a bit. Then this is what you are going to actually have. You get it right now. So it's optional. The position you want to have this, you can change the position of this one now. So if I go over to here, this one, I'm coming over here now, then I can just go ahead and change direction inside base, you know, here, wherever I want to have it right in. So it's all your option. So if what you want to do is to have it at the top, including this one, that means we have to delete this very one from here. Then we click on this one and have the data label turned on. Then we go over to here. Make sure you click on it. So we go over to here and um, we click on this very one here. So we click over here. So we go ahead and locate where we can have it from. So now we should have, um, we should have it, I think. What the heck is it? Yeah, we can have this on it. So can you see it now? Then we can turn off the value. That is how we can have this one above. This is cool. This is cool. All right, as you can see, I have actually added all the labels we want or the titles we want. So let us bring in this particular one, which is our age group. We now have all the charts up here. The next thing I'm going to do now is to actually align things properly the way it should be. So I'm going to keep this one around here and double click to have this up, then remove the fill color and as well, the outline color should be removed. Then I'm going to keep this one as well at its right place, which is over here. Then this very one, I just have to properly align it. So we just have to bring it down. Our charts are ready. So the next thing now is for we to actually keep this at the right spot, which is our slicers. So to actually have the slicers at the right place right now, what we need to do is to make sure we format what we have right here. So first of all, let's go with this very one, which is this one here. I'm going to keep this one here now. Just remove it and keep it somewhere around here. For this one, I'm going to click and uh, go to slicer. And let's go with this. Here we go. Just adjust it and do this. So I'm going to keep this one here. Although it's not looking good yet, but don't worry. You'll see what it's going to turn into later after all. I'm going to just do this and make sure it covers. And over here, I'm going to do 
show everything on one single line like this okay so we don't want to actually have this to be showing up right here we want to hide it but before we hide it there is something we must do so what is that we have to create something that would hide and, rev and re sorry we've cleared the filter at once for us without you having this on and in order to do that just clear all the filters you have clear this filter have this filter cleared have this filter cleared right so once you have done this now i think we are having an issue somewhere around here we'll fix it later but just hold on let me show you something so once you have done this let's go to the top ribbon click on this developer and click on record macro we are recording the macro 100%. So I'm going to just say uh, clear slices. Then click on OK. Now your recording has started. Don't do any other thing aside what you are here for. So just go ahead and click on this. Once you have done that, you clear it. So click on this particular one. Once you have done that, you clear it. Click on this one. Once you have done that, you have it cleared as well. So this is it. You have recorded it. Go over to the top ribbon and click on stop. Did you get that now? So now I'm going to come over here and uh, just get in here uh, some kind of a text box. I'm going to drag it down. So what I'm going to do now is just say clear filter. Clear slicer. So just clear slicer, just going to make it a bit smaller like this. So for the time being, it's going to be somewhere around here. Later after all, we fix a place for it. So if I right click now and I go over to this particular assign macro, I'm going to see the macro here where it says clear slicers. I'm going to do OK. So what happens if I go ahead and add and add this one? So add this one. So clicking over here now would actually clear the whole thing for me can you see the magic right now but the thing is this once you have done this if you try to save now it wouldn't save any longer because this has turned into a macro enable workbook automatically it's not more your normal workbook again so for that it says to continue saving as a macro workbook click on yes so you click on yes but my favorite way to do this is for you to go over to file and go to save as and change the saving from our format so instead of excel workbook let us go with excel macro enable workbook right so here we go just put here update updated so click on save so here we go now we can just right click on this one and uh, go to slider settings have the header hidden then click on ok so just get this like this keep this over here do the same thing to this one hide any item with no data do the same thing to this one All right, can you see it now? So you keep this over here. So next is for me to come over here and just bring this in here. And on this one, let's go back up, click on slicer and just make it two like this. So we can just make sure we manage the space we have for it. Okay, so here we go. We have something like this. It's not in any way looking beautiful yet, but the thing is this, why is this highlighted when there is no selection from here? Can, look, can you look at it? Once it has been cleared, it is still having selection. So let us go ahead and check it out. So over here, we go to where we have the customer right in. All 
uh, I think that that should be location location here is location right so the location here so this location oh no what the heck is going on here So we move this one and we hit our enter key. Now we have fixed the whole thing. It's just a very simple something. Now it's gone. It's only when we make a selection that we see the highlight here. Then if the selection is being cleared, that would actually go. So right now it is time for we to actually get this set. So just make sure you double click on this one and you have this up. So now you can actually you can just click on this one and change it to a color you like let's go with this color we do the same thing to this one we want to go with this color right here so a very calm color okay and that thing again is this we have to agree on the size we want so let me just reduce this or make it a bit wider like this so we are going to go with 120 so this 124 should let's go with 120 so this 120 should be for every one of them. So including this one, we make it 120. So 120 here. So we go with 120 on this one. So 120. And uh, the color should match this very one here. So this one here, the way it looks, it looks tiny. So we can make this one to be more than 120 for it to match other ones. Can you see it now? So we do the same to this one. Okay, fine. Then let's go with something like this. Okay, what is next? Let us give a highlight to every part of those ones that have the highlight. So with this one now, we can click over this one here and some kind of choose to use a color that is related to this so if we choose this color here it's not really bad this highlights exactly what we want for us so we do the same thing to this very one so to give the highlight we go with this color and uh, we come over here we go with the same color for that so every single time there's a selection what we need to see is this color can you see it now can you see can you see this now? This is what it is. So this is how I created this particular kind of dashboard, or if you want to call it effect whatsoever, so be it. So here we go. The next thing now is that we have a chart right here that is actually telling us about gender, which is very simple. What did I do? I just went up here, click on illustration, go to shapes, click on circle, and hold my shift key down to drag this circle like this, right? I release it. So once I've done that, I'm going to keep this one right here. If I'm not satiated, I can just increase this width a little bit. So here we go. Ctrl D to duplicate. And I'm going to increase this one to be bigger. I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. And that one, then I'm going to make this one smaller, but not as small as this one. So we have the three version of them. So let us just increase this a bit. Hold your shift key, make sure you release your wideness just a bit. Okay, we just add a bit of this one. All right, we have this. Now, control one, come over here. So we want to change this one to this very color here. No outline. This one to the color we have used for our highlight. Can you see it now? So no outline. This very one should match this very color here and uh, no outline. This is what I've done. So I'm going to arrange this somewhere around here. So this one should come at the top of all of them. So bring to front. So I'm going to make sure it touches this one a bit. Then this one should actually be beneath it like this. Right, 
So over this one, I can hold my shift key to still expand it to make it a bit bigger. So you can keep playing around with it until you have your desired circle that works for you, right? Is all your choice. So this is much, just reduce it a little bit. So once you have done that, hold your control key and uh, select all of them and make sure it's being justified like this. So we can move this one away and have it somewhere around here. So now hold your control key again and just make sure you centralize it. Something like this will be best for what we want to show. So once we have gotten this now, let's go back up again and now bring this particular rounded corner rectangle. So we just give something like this. So we control the edge to be like this. So we can just make it, let's not make it too roundy. Then we just reduce it and have something like this over here. So we keep this somewhere around here and we match it up with this color. So we take off the outline. So I'm going to keep it this way. Do double it and keep this one over here and match it up with this particular color. So Ctrl D and match this one with this very color we have used. Okay. Can you see this now? So if we go back to our raw data, the gender column is what we're going to take a look at right now. So under the gender column, we have gender to be female, male, or other, which is those people that did not specify their gender. So we go back here and let's just pick any random one from here. Control D to duplicate it. And over here, we just type inside it. So order. We're going to make it a bit smaller. This will be here. Something here is good. So we control Z. Let's come over here, reduce it a bit. Something like this is cool. So we have this one here. So this one should be maybe let's just use the male gender. So here is a female. So I'm going to keep this over here. So right now, as you can see, it's not really cool if I should have it here. So what I'm going to do is just to bring this one in again. Then this one can actually have a space to sit. Okay. Once I've done this, the next thing I'm going to do now is just to go over to the top Select it first, go to the top ribbon, click on find and select and select this one. Then you can select this particular side like this and push them inside. Something like this is cool, right? This is how simple it is for you to create something like this. So the next thing now is for we to create a pivot table for this. So go over here now. We can create a pivot table for this. Just copy this one and paste it over here. By gender. So if I click on this one, I'm going to go here and I will locate my gender, keep my gender here. So this is all I want. I don't want any other thing. This is all I just want. So over here now, I'm going to do control one. So control one, I can reduce this and click on OK. So can you see it now? So once we are very much cool with what we have right here, then the next thing we have to do is for we to show this one uh, based on something like this. Can you see? But how do we replicate this without doing this from, from the scratch? It's very simple. All I have to do is to copy everything away from here. So Ctrl C and uh, I'm down here now. 
I can just paste this over here. So if I double click on it now, this is looking for a particular thing. I don't want this to happen. I just want to take off this particular part. So we are not doing this bit on switch between whether it's one or two. We're just making it direct this thing. So over here, I'm going to select this one and highlight this. And to make it easy for me, I can select this one, Ctrl C, double click on this one. It highlights it for you. Like this one here, highlights, double click over here. You Ctrl V, you Ctrl V, and Ctrl V on this one. You Ctrl V as well. You Ctrl V to change it. You Ctrl V finally to change this. Once I hit my Enter key, this should be right for me. So if I go ahead and actually copy this down now, I should have something like this. Can you see it now? So here we go. So let's see how we can actually play around with this one. Go over here and let us copy this one. So I'm going to keep this here and open up this particular part here. Then we put our equal sign in here and we go over to this. So we are taking for order. So for order is this. Can you see it now? The only thing that is not visible now. Okay, I think everything is visible. That is right. So we have everything here. So in one decimal place, this is cool. We can just go over here and increase this like this. So one thing I'm gonna do is to some kind of match this with the color I have. So let's go over here and uh, let us match it with this particular color. So this is not going to be visible much. So I might want to select this something that looks much more catchy, something like this would be cool. So we just go ahead and control D to duplicate it. We bring this over here and we go ahead and select this one. All you have to do is to match this to the right percentages, which is what I'm doing right now. Just come over to here and just match it to female percentage. And this is what you have. So once you have done this, this one here, black will not pop. So what I'm going to do is to come over here and make sure I increase the size and change it to white. So this pops, right? So we can just add more. So let's do this. Okay. Over here, black pops. I can just increase this. And leave it at what it is right so all i have to do is just to some kind of make sure it sits in the middle this one here white will pop so we can just increase what we have in it and we bring this to this level so here we go we have all of this so this is giving us something very beautiful already so if i go over here now so it's very close to what we have gotten before as a final result. But something is not yet cool with what we are doing now. And that is our slicer. Our slicer is not making it look beautiful. So how can we actually change the way the slicer is looking right now? To format this particular slicer, what you need to do is to select eight of them, like this one here, and go over to the top ribbon, click on slicer, and right click on any of this one, then duplicate it. So once you have done that, you can give it a name right here. So my style. So then over here for the whole slicer, you want to go to format and you choose border. You take off the border because you don't want it. Then for the fill color, you want to go with white. Then for the font color, there is no need for that because it's just the body. So we go ahead and click on OK. Now for the header here, there is no header. We have disabled the header. Now for the selected item with data, how do you want to format it? So what we need to do now is to click over here and this particular one, we say none for the first time. And we now come over here and say we want to actually add, you know, some kind of um, border, but the border should be something not too dark. So we want something like this. We're going to select this and we just only want to have it at the bottom right here. This is where we want to have our border right in. Now, the selected one now, for the fill color, what we want to have when something is selected, the fill color should be something like this. Can you see it now? 
this is what I want to use to identify the selected one, right? So for the font now, the font should be on black. So we can change it after all, but let's go with this one, then click on OK. Now for the selected item with data, we have done that. On selected item with data, we click on this one, we go over to border and we clear off the border. We come over here, we use a thin border with this here, a thin one, and we just give it to this, right? So the now uh, the next thing we have to do now for the fill, we put it on white to match with the main background of our card. Then for the font here, we can come over here. We actually make it not too visible because we want to, we don't want to overshadow the selected one, right? So we click on OK, right? So now we want to say hover the selected one. Hover selected item with data. Once we hover over it, we want to see a particular color. So we don't want any border. So the color we want to see on hover is something like this. And black color should pop out on it. So with no border. So we click. So hover on selected item with data. You click on that again. Then on selected item with data, you just go. For the field color, because it's unselected, we want to choose something like this for it. And for the font, black color will pop out, but we don't want something very dark. We just want something like this. We click on OK. Now, finally, I click on OK right here. So if I select this two here now and go over to here and select this one, you can see what I have. So what happens if I hover? Can you see? Everything I've defined is what I have right here. Can you see this one now? The selected one it will stand out so the question you might have now is that why didn't i use it for this one no i'm not going to use it for this one because if i use it i don't want this particular white to cut out of my you know long card i'm going to do something separate for this very one select this one first of all let us verify the background we have here click over here and click over here this is it here so now we take note of that so going over to the top ribbon select slicer this is what we have used duplicate this one as well again so all i have to change is just the hole and uh, this is my style too so come over here and select the fill so the fill now should match the background and i click on ok then click on ok right here Then let's go with this sorry here is it can you see what I'm talking about? Can you see now? This is what it's going to give to you. This will look more beautiful. So do you see this now? So what I'm going to do now is to actually click on this very slicer here and make it a bit smaller. That still shows what is here. So why am I doing this? I want to show here something. So let's go to this website. um here so i'm gonna say delete so i want to download the delete icon from here so downloaded so we are back here we we'll quickly go ahead and pick it up, insert. So all I need to do now is just to resize it. I purposely download the, the red one. Then we make it a bit smaller. That will fit into this area. And it will still look like a delete or trash icon. So I'm going to bring it over here. So once I've done that, the next thing now is just to come over here and uh, bring this one into here. So make sure it covers this very one. So for that, you can extend it. Then you can move this one back a bit. Then control one, then no fill, no this. And for the text option, we want the text to be on red. Okay, once done, 
we can come over here and here we go can you see so this one here now let's see if i just select this now so this icon here is what is gonna just send people right here that okay clear slicer the person sees this and just click on if he clears so can you see it now can you see can you see this now all right the last thing we're going to do right now is that our sliders are not connected to all our charts we need to do that it's very very important so let's try to see how we can get that done quickly what you have to do to create this particular connection is for you to actually name all your pivot table so let's go over to analysis over here so this pivot table has to do with gender so make sure you select the pivot table itself and go over here click on this particular part which is pivot table analyze then go over to pivot table and over here you put gender then you do that to every single pivot table you have right here this one has to do with top three top five oh yeah top five so you just go over here and do top five customers on this particular part as you can see we have those profitability view right all you have to do is to come over to this particular part here then go over here and just say profit copy this particular profitability and once you have it on clipboard you can actually give it like brand name then you go to the next one which is this one here you do the same thing you just paste this one in and you actually give it location it's very important to map out what it is so we're doing this for a reason then this one is just gonna be a uh, full name so we can just give this one to profitability customer and lastly this is gonna be our salesperson oh we still have one rather Okay, this is for the age group. Okay, that is all. The next thing is for you to actually name this one as just KPI. That is all you need to do. So we name this one as KPI. So once you are done, let's go back here. So right now, for which actually give this one the right, you know, this thing right now what we can do is just to make sure we click on this okay one assignment you should have if you're still watching is for like if i select hold my control key to multi select right now there will be no highlight here so i want you to actually look at what kind of function can you use to actually make sure when you have multi selection it will highlight the numbers of selections you have from your slices so it's very simple i just want to leave that to you so now right click and go over to report connection then once you have this up you can now some kind of expand this to see everything you have right here so the very first thing you have to do is to look at this you have to connect this connect this one then connect to age group then payment method is what we have there so we can't link it to payment method so we can link it to this one link it to this one this one here this this and this let's go and here we go so I think there are some of them that are not some kind of length. Those ones here, I think they are not named. So you have to just make sure you name everything. So to make it rightly, just go ahead and do this. And uh, here we go. Here we go. So payment method should be away from it. Okay. So here we go. Everything is actually part of it. So you do the same thing to this very one right here just right click and go to report connection and actually do the same thing and connect it that is all you have to do to actually connect this to the right listing so the next thing is for you to put a dashboard name right here okay if you look at it we just get a replicant of what we have right here into that particular part is something very simple that anyone can actually create all you have to do is just to spend some time doing this practice and you will learn a lot that you can actually add to your own personal project 
if you are still watching to this end i'm just gonna say thank you very much for you to actually being here for me so don't forget to hit the like button see you in the next video